Um, let's see. The last thing uh, we're going to talk about as far as uh, importing is the raster. So before um, we had it uh, rendered out, um, in order to have it, um, uh, all that information that we stylized in QGIS to be um, imported into tile mill. So we're going to add this layer, and it's done in the exact same fashion as everything else. Um, desktop, tile mill. And then we have our rendered out interpolation. WGS84. And so, voila, it's there. Uh, the one thing that we're going to want to change about this is <coughs> place it under our ocean so it um, melds better with the, ge uh, the uh, geography. Oh, sorry. There we go. So this uh, urban t uh, interpolation I simply did off the fly. There isn't much meaning to it. I just wanted to uh, show you how this would look within a map. But the nice thing about it is that now that we have um, this rendering and we have another layer over it, that it really melds well with uh, the shoreline and the geography. So you have kind of a comprehensive uh, look with all this information in it. It does. So it's actually similar to like a vector file. It's going to keep, you want to want to keep these, um, your uh, pixel quality relatively high in order to have um, it smoothed out. Um, this is trial and error. Right? It is, yeah. A lot of this stuff really is trial and error and just, you know, trying as many things as possible in order to, until it looks uh, relatively well. There are a few things that you can do for raster scaling in um, tile mill, um, as, well, as well as you know the opacity. Uh, so if you want to change the opacity, it's just, you guys know it's as simple as changing that number. Um, but there's also the, um, the scaling. Um, there are multiple um, scaling algorithms you can use, but I really haven't tested out the other ones. Um, I've used bilinear and it's worked uh, pretty well um, when I bring it into the web. Oops. Get lowercase v. Shouldn't, yeah. So it does blur it out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so that's pretty much it uh, when it comes to importing and stylizing and uh, you know bringing in custom icons. Um, of course, there is an abundance of things you can do beyond that and get really in depth in how each of these layers look. But um, for the purposes of this, uh, you know, tutorial, it's basically the uh, exact same workflow, which is identifying features, giving it its own style, and you know, building up those hierarchies of information, and you know, always making sure that it's uh, legible. Um, the last thing uh, we're going to show before we get into uh, exporting is there is a fair amount of uh, interactivity that you can add into uh, your map. So. Um, what you can do, and this is super useful when um, uh, putting this on the web to offer a little bit of explanation of it, is offer uh, to put in a legend or um, a teaser or, uh, you know, there's, you know, different. So if you tap uh, point once, it'll give that information. Um, tap it once, it'll give, or twice or once, it'll do different things. Um, but for each of these guys, it's, um, sorry, it's not giving me the box. It's built up in HTML, which is kind of unfortunate because, you know, of course, we don't know HTML that well. But um, for the purpose of this, it's actually somewhat simple. So you just start off your um, whatever text you want to include as 
you know, strong. So um, that's your strong, like, beginning of the statement tag. Um, so let's write this is demo for the city. And let's say, for example, that you want to um, end this. So you have to forward slash long to encapsulate that. And then if you want to break to another line, br forward slash. Uh, and then we'll just say circle size indicates uh, weight of the connection. And then just close it. Click save. And you'll see that this legend will appear right here. So that's super useful. Um, the next thing we can do is uh, using our teaser. Um, so let's say for nodes two, um, the nice thing I'll do is we'll give you those fields that you can import um, to have that interactivity. So all you have to do is copy one of these out, uh, click save, and yep. So see when I identify each of these guys, it'll show up in the top right hand corner. And there's a lot more you can do um, with um, this information, like add you know, extra tags, possibly icons, uh, stuff like that. But it's going into other you know, areas of you know, um, this mustache template language, I'm not quite sure, and then HTML. But once again, just as the way we're sort of doing with Python, besides what we're learning in class, there's you know, a plethora of documentation uh, all you have to do is just go online and you know copy and paste and look at other people's stylizing and you know get a sense of how that um, that really works. So <clears throat> overall, uh, you know this looks uh, fairly good. So uh, the last thing I'm uh, going to want to show, which um, is going to be quite important, is how we export this into um, uh, Mapbox. So. Tilemail basically sets up the stylization of your uh, interactive map, and then Mapbox is the tool you use in order to publish it. And so the way that you get this information into Mapbox is by exporting out what's called vector tiles. So the same way it's done in Google Maps or any online map is that each of these will be exported into a um, small uh, vector tile that'll be displayed on the web and you know recomposed back together. Uh, so in order to do this, first we need to have a sense of what we're actually showing. As I said earlier, uh, if we showed the entire world within this, um, it would be you know extremely, it wouldn't be useful and it would also be extremely heavy. So since we're just looking at Shenzhen, um, we're gonna say that we want our uh, max zoom factor to be 11 and sorry, our minimum zoom factor to be uh, uh, 10 and then our max to be, and there's no more point to get any more down in this, 15. So once we know that, we go up to export and then we're gonna wanna export it out as MB tiles. Uh, from here, it'll take you to a different uh, screen and the first thing you're gonna wanna do is click uh, what looks like the center of your map. Take a little long to load. So we're going to want to add a center to it. So the center basically denotes like the um, what it's going to look like when you first log on. Um, once that's set, you're going to want to hit shift and then drag over the area that you want to display. So a little better than that. All right. So this looks pretty good. Uh, once that's done, it should already have the bounds in the center uh, put within um, your interface here. So, sorry, I'll be careful what you cut on. The last thing we're going to want to look at is the zoom factors. As I said, keep that in mind from earlier. Uh, it's 100 gigabytes to have the entire map, but we're going to only do 10 uh, to, actually I'm just going to do 14 for this, just so I know that it'll export out relatively quickly. Uh, and save the settings to the project. Oh, sorry. Um, tile mill class tutorial. All right, and we can hit export. Oof. 
Enter. Oh. So it does take a bit of time, and the larger you want that zoom area to be, and also the more information you have in it, the longer it's going to take. Uh, I've been in a situation where it takes up to 30 minutes, so just be cognizant of that. Um, since this is relatively small, it shouldn't take more than what it looks like between 30 and 40 seconds, which is nice. Uh, this will save out into your documents. So, um, within export, so Mapbox, export, and ready right now, it should be, yep, it's getting larger and larger. Also keep in mind that you're gonna wanna keep this under, I don't know, uh, 40 megabytes really, otherwise it'll take a while to load on the web and it won't be, it'll be, you know, just take a very long time to load and won't be that useful to you. It's it like a limit to the free version. Yeah, oh, it's 100 megabytes. Um, but you're going to want, you're most likely going to be putting multiple files on there just to test it. So just be aware of how much you're using. Um, but it shouldn't be too bad. I mean, you could probably get like maybe three or four tests and then a, a final file on there. So just mention really quickly, this idea of tiles, the format is MB tiles map box, so it's, it's proprietary. But the idea of representing a map as tiles at multiple zoom levels is now like fundamentally the way that maps are drawn along. So for a while, I don't know who first invented it, probably like um, one of those old, before Google Maps, there was like, uh, map quests, yeah, like they probably invented it. But you know, uh, the point is that it's actually, you might think that it's cheaper um, in terms of memory to represent vectors, but when you're talking about the whole world, it's actually a lot better to have everything stored as rasters that have multiple like discrete zooms and then load that up on the fly as a person zooms. So you might have never noticed because you're so used to working with maps this way, but when you go on Google and you zoom in, it takes a while for it to refresh. It's actually pulling that information on demand from the server. And everything in Google Maps and MapQuest or whatever is always all raster. So even though it looks like lines, they're all rendered out as separate passes on different zooms. So that's what Mapbox does and actually it lets us work with that format, but this has been now uh, adopted as like the only way to do maps online. Mm -hmm. So what I just did, um, in order to upload those tiles, uh, just upload data. Uh, you go to your export folder and then select out whatever uh, MB tiles um, to uh, bring in. And so, so say upload complete. Uh, I'm gonna refresh this. All right, and so it is now there. Preview, and voila, you know, we have our online map. And so, as you can see, I can only zoom out so far, and I can only zoom in so close. So that's the effect of those uh, zoom factors that we built in. Um, and already, you know, we have our um, uh, legend working, as well as our uh, interactivity as far as identifying the information on the, uh, the um, Weibo nodes. Um, so that pretty much is it when it comes to using tile mill and map box. Um, as I said, it's you know extremely intuitive. Uh, you know it takes a little bit while to get into, um, but other than that, I mean it, it should be definitely within your grasp to do something really uh, nice with it.